we are slightly out of schedule. We can take one quick question. Or we can leave it for later. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> this session is about improving the RAN organization. The question is, how do we do that? What, what he has suggested. Well, the way I would answer this question a few years ago would be go around. As he pointed out, somebody else is already doing something similar. So go out, spy on others, and steal their ideas. That was before I met Peter Egger, who taught me there is much more to that than spying and stealing. It's called benchmarking, and what it is, he will tell us. Uh, Peter Egger has a master's degree in economics education and social studies. And since 93, he has been a project manager working for human resource research at the benchmarking division of the Volkswagen Coaching GmbH. Um, Peter, from what I'm impressed with, Peter is an uh, important member um, of a team and actually important person behind the project Volkswagen has trying to teach 300,000 workers throughout the world how to use internet. And we are not talking about managers, we are talking about people working on the assembly line, putting cars together. They are trying to teach them how to use the internet. And um, this is something that impressed me very much. You need some time? Okay, we can, is it on? Yes. We can start anyway. So thanks, Vedak. Yes, uh, that was one project which we did last year. The name was Level 5, and the idea was, starting from the board, we want that every employee within the Volkswagen world has a basic knowledge of Internet and using the Outlook mailing system. In fact, we started in Germany. That means 100,000 people. Worldwide is 300,000 people. But we first started in Germany and have some more companies, not yet uh, the rest of the Volkswagen world. Yes, I hope we will start uh, immediately with the presentation. The title, I read it again, Reorganizing Networks Through Benchmarking from Network to Information Flow. And why did I put flow in the headline? So my mission, my vision, when I work with people in organization is about that uh, to create an atmosphere that people can say what they think. And it's not only communication, it's communication based on dialogue. And last year, I found an interesting definition for dialogue, which is the free flow of meaning. And when I look into my own company, it's not so often that people are really saying what they think in the meaning of free flow of meaning. And this is part of my research I'm doing. And the title of my research, the focus is, I'm creating a theory of passion so that people can do that. And he mentioned, remember the first two years, five years of your childhood, yes. This has been a period in my life, in your life, where you are full of passion, ignoring all these rules which we have in the world and being very creative. And this is described by flow. And I try to create such moments of flow where you really forgot the rest of the world around you, just focusing, creating, uh, a nice project idea you're working on. And now coming information flow to your topic, which you try to create with your network work. And uh, this, I have the picture in mind that uh, information flow means that people in universities, in schools, professors, teachers, are using the internet, the network, completely happy to create their courses with the tools, forgetting about many things around them. I know that this is not the case, but just to have a picture which is important where to go. So the other point is reorganizing networks. And uh, last year at the SUTS conference, Predak showed a slide talking about the mission of networks. And he said that the mission of network is a function of the role of academic society. So that means that you have to understand your role and focus and create the way to achieve it. One point in my work is first to make understand what I'm talking about, which is also for your mission of networks. And for that reason, I. No, it's funny. 
The first point is to simplify and to make understandable what I'm talking about. And I'm not technician, just to tell you. And with a very simple question I started to your topic, why are you building and maintaining a network? And I think that people from academic society should use a network and add internet technology to their work. These are the new users. Second, they have to improve their work and they have to speed up their working processes. And now I make the link to benchmarking. Looking to this main focus, benchmarking questions could be, how much gigabyte is a limit, for example? Or how many users are using your network? And in the next step, I want to understand what kind of users they are. Third, how many hours per day, week they use the net? This is a wonderful measurement indicator to understand, do users have value out of your process and your products? Or what servers are very often used? What products are users' favorites? You know these ABC analysis. Out of these discussion, you can have A products, B products, and you can, from the strategic point, focus on the main points users like to use. And how many professors add internet to their lectures? By free choice, not because you are pushing, 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 that they are doing that. So that's the introduction. Let's jump to the next topic, to the benchmarking. And the next five minutes is about benchmarking. What does it mean, benchmarking? There's one sentence, benchmarking means learning from and with others. And the difference to knowledge management, knowledge management is looking to the whole knowledge in an organization. Benchmarking is focusing on special topics. So, and benchmarking means to have the courage to be humble enough to admit that someone else is better than I am and then go there and learn from him. So open my cards and then think about with whom I can start this benchmarking journey. And I'd like to give you an example about that, which has been done by Southwest Airlines some years ago. They were quite good in business, but they like to improve, and they choose the methodology of benchmarking. And uh, the most important thing for airlines is being in the air when they're earning money. And they try <clears throat> to reduce time on ground because this costs money. Second, after having chosen the topic, select a team with experts of all fields which are touch touched, in this case, experts on the ground services. And tell them the methodology of benchmarking and then start with step number three and understand your own process. In this case, it's about safety, reliability, and speed. And then in the next stop, you start choosing partners. Who has more or less a process which is similar to my own? This could be in the same business. This could also be in a completely different business. And uh, they found a partner, and it took part last weekend in Austria in the Formula One racing car, and they have thought, we could learn from those teams. Because their job is to do within 10 seconds, or eight seconds, these are the best. Put fuel in, cleaning the helmet, changing the wheels, and up again in the race. And with the benchmarking team of the aircraft, they visited a team in the automotive sport business, and they learned a lot. And then going back, step six, they tried to improve their own process, having learned maybe completely crazy ideas. But this transfer to my own process, this is really an interesting point within the benchmarking process, creating a lot of curiosity and new ideas 
for the benchmarking team. And step seven, to check whether we have reached our goals. Yes, and Southwest Airlines is really a crazy airline, you can say. They have changed their core business to those points. And uh, last year I met a colleague, he flew Southwest Airlines and said, oh, I have an interesting experience. I was sitting in the waiting hall like you now, and uh, then I saw two big guys, black dressed, tattoos on the arms, muscles like this, and they are not seats. You are just jumping like in the bus and in front your seat. And my colleague has thought, when I'm sitting beside these two, this is not a nice flight. So, you know what has happened? He had a seat beside these two guys. And then he was sitting and looking for a stewardess. Can you help me? And the stewardess just said, this is a philosophy. Not with words, but with the eyes, I will help you. And after a while, she was coming and asking the two big boys with some cashews, would you be so kind and take the cashews and collect it, give it to the people sitting in the aircraft? And suddenly the strange atmosphere of the big boys giving something to eat to the people come down to a wonderful atmosphere. I never have seen such a reaction within Lufthansa or, I don't know, Air France or something like that. This is about to surprise and to act in a moment with a lot of responsibility. This is the idea of finding your unique point of your business. And Southwest did. Yeah, this is just again the seven steps of the methodology. So you have it in your materials. This is a kind of checklist, just a short description. Yes, I think you are all doing benchmarking within the Terena network. The difference to use this kind of benchmarking is to focus first on a typical topic make the topic clear, understandable, and then try to invite and to find partners to improve your process. Now after this description of benchmarking and how it is used in practice, I'm jumping back to your topic and field you are working in. Uh, some weeks ago, I was sitting with Incarnate and talking to Nevenko, and we were thinking about what's going on in the future with networks, with users, with products, and all that stuff. And first point is, we're talking about network, and the message was, well, our networks, we are quite good. We have some parts which we have to link, but 85% 80, are well done. Okay, and the image is positive on the users. Then we jumped over to the users and we tried to understand what is the situation about the users. And he said, oh, we have some questions and uh, we have to do some work there. And then we are looking to the future and uh, the message was, in the past it was putting energy to build a network. But the future means to make the link from the network to the users. And one link is, we know that all, the online learning activities which we have worldwide. And for that reason, I created an example, so the topic, step one, could be online learning. And I take in schools, because it's important to focus, not comparing everything. Next step, creating a team. You need expertise from different fields technical, political, educational expert, maybe a marketing expert. And then, next step, as I said, try to analyze the process. And an assessment could be a tool to understand user groups, activities, quality, etc. And just to show you what does it mean in practice, 
these are just data which I fantasy data, you can say. I compare four networks, and in the beginning, when you try to select a partner, take some core figures of the organization. I select one topic, which are employees, and I like to know how many employees are working on technical fields. This is the first indicator. If you look to network B, you see this is really a technical focused network. If you look to D, you can imagine that they were focusing on different things. Next point, you have to focus on the user. And not only saying, mm, my users are satisfied. Go into detail. And level one could be users are informed about the products up to level five users use services and create new things by themselves. And questionnaire could be a tool to do that, there are others. But go into detail to understand your users. I'm jumping back to our matrix. Look to the products and you see, I said the topic is e-learning in schools. In schools, network A, and network D put energy. And then you can see, oh, network A also has a train the trainer. This could be an interesting benchmarking partner. And network D, on the other hand, has a help desk. So if you are interested in those points, put more criteria in these matrix, and you can identify very easily the right partner with whom you work, like to work together. The headline was reorganizing networks through benchmarking. And uh, reorganizing always has to do with the organization on the one hand and with the individual on the other hand. And I put the organization, the networks on the one side and on the right side the individual, the partner with whom networks are working or the users. And I put on the list some criteria to make the link efficient. First is the organization, the leadership of the organization should be clear about the focus, where to go, so that is clear for the users. The second point is make clear that you are in dialogue with your users so that you understand what they really need. Predak said we had these level five projects within Volkswagen. I was working in, within the team and I was working as a non-technical guy, <laughs> Peter Egger, with a lot of technicians. I can tell you it's not easy to find a common language. Try to do that. Uh, within level five, we had an interesting experience. If you see an organization as a house, in the top there was the idea, train all employees with a basic knowledge of internet. Then we implemented a team who was responsible to do that, the level five team. And then within the level five team, we have all things e-learning, CD-ROM, marketing, and we give the information to managers, to foremen in the production area, and we hope that they inform the workers in the shop floor and in the offices, please do that and pass the test of the internet. And then we found that after 10, 15,000 people who have done the test, the rest were, it was a stop. The problem was that the managers and the foremen are not telling the level five story with passion. So then we selected and we trained a group of people who are just giving the level five information in our mind with our passion to the people in the Volkswagen world. And then suddenly, more and more people are doing this project. And we go in the production area in the night shift, 
in the morning so that people can do the test and the learning for the test for 24 hours a day. Language, find the right language so that users do understand your technical products, which is the biggest problem, big, big problem in the communication between technician and users. Give them the big picture, not only in detail, so that they can use it and understand and create it in the best way. And try to make sure that the whole picture is translated to the people who use it. And when you succeed in doing that, looking back to the house, the idea on the top, and everyone in the house of an organization should use it, then you talk about alignment because all people are going in the same direction. And this is finally the flow which I like to create, inviting people to use my tools. What I can offer is, and I know that from Carnet, that they are, were very interested in starting some more activities about benchmarking, online learning, e-learning for schools. And who is interested in, please feel free, give me the business card. <clears throat> give me your business card and we try to create the kind of benchmarking study about this topic. Thank you very much. Questions? Peter, how do you decide who to benchmark with? How do you choose the right organization? It depends on the topic. <laughs> if you have e-learning with Nebenko, we, we brainstorm with a team who has started the benchmarking journey, what are the criteria? So first you have to select whether it's university, libraries, or schools. So we selected schools. Then we added some more criteria, first 10 years in school or the last five years in school. Then we selected uh, whether focusing maybe on the topic, mathematics, science, or whatever. And uh, for example, we discovered spontaneously in a network in Denmark, Demenko said, hmm, this is a good benchmarking partner. Let's, let's see whether we get in contact and maybe after having analyzed our own situation, go there and talk to the experts there. So it depends that you focus out of your topic some criteria which you like to know. Is it clear? It's clear what you say, but I, I still have problems in my life uh, finding out. Um, because the natural thing is that you go to someone in the same business you are. But we are, we are listening about these examples, how people go and uh, benchmark with uh, Formula One racing cars while they're in the uh, I, I airline another, business. Or, you know, yes, I have another example. Last year I discovered Latvia. So I go to Riga, work a little bit within Lat Telecom. And Lat Telecom it's similar to your, maybe in, in, a, in one perspective. During the last year, they put a lot of cables to create the network within Latvia. And now this year, Lat Telecom before was more owned by government. Now the market is open, opened. Competitive is there. And Lat Telecom has to focus on different points. And they reduce the energy which they put on creating a network of the past and now focusing on new business fields. And for that reason, La Telecom is looking for benchmarking examples who has done a similar tendency in the world. So moving from the core business, creating the network to giving internet services, complete offers, etc., etc. These could be partners for networks like this, seeing when the pressure of business is coming, what have companies done which have a similar business to you. Thanks. Questions? Peter, thank you. Narines have been studied by 